Busking is the British verb for a street performance. I've done busking on and off for like a decade. Maybe I can tell you about it. I don't remember my first attempt, but it was in Edinburgh, probably Rose Street, soon after getting my first acoustic guitar. The way I've learned music is quite a solo habit, so it's just rhythm guitar, playing things in the shape of songs. It's all about sustaining a song by myself. I play piano the same way. I can't really focus on playing a lead line without making a friend first, and I'll let you know how that goes. I am really inept at guitar, but I know most of the chords and how to hold a plectrum. Actually, maybe not even that, considering how much I scratch these things up. I've written hundreds of songs, and I know, like, maybe a thousand more. Initially, I would go through the more acoustic-compatible things I'd written, with the occasional cover, but the first thing I learned from the busk is that people like things they already know. It's pretty obvious, really, and I concur from my experience as the audience. I rock out to what I'm familiar with. And all of my busking set list was songs I was familiar with anyway, so goes to show. So my own songs became occasional after a couple of years, and then they just stopped being there. I'm a bit imposter syndrome with my songs. Without the proof of audience approval, I have room to believe that they're kind of incomplete and flawed in some subliminal way I can't access, that holds them back from the pantheon of real published pop songs. I thereby focused on stuff I like that's popular enough to get some of those recognition pennies. Yeah, so money. The declarations of untaxed earnings in this video are completely irrelevant. I'm nowhere near as rich as I sound. How it works is you stand in public making a nuisance noise, and people kind of incidentally pay you their leftover change. This was back when we actually had a physical currency. I think I'm far from the most successful of buskers, but the income and interest could justify the exertion sometimes. And to be honest, I just felt like playing songs, and it was better to do that where people might give a shit compared to just playing songs in private. Without an audience, I wouldn't even necessarily commit to going all through a song. I generally did commit to it on the streets. But with a passerby audience, you can style out forgetting a verse a bit better, and cut a song short if it's not working and nobody really notices. The song's structural integrity is still important to me, but it's a balance between song and audience. I do prefer a street audience to a captive audience, because anyone who stops or pays has chosen to stop or pay. Passing a busker has a kind of spontaneous novelty compared to the need to impress of a stage performer. And on stages, I experience stage fear. Even after decades of being staged, it's just not the same outside. The income could vary hugely, but the public seemed like a collective entity as far as income was concerned. If the public was generous, that was consistent. If they were uninterested, it seemed the whole public was. Part of the experience is the time before the first payment, which can last maybe up to two or three songs. Well, I bet it's been a lot more on some days. Which felt like it's not yet in motion. I can start with something really strong, like like we were born within an hour of each other It's a god-awful small affair Or often just whatever I'd most recently added to the list Or whatever's buzzing around my head on that day And the entity of the public just takes a moment to welcome me, if at all I'd seen a tip somewhere that buskers should throw in some, like, primer money themselves to start it off. And I did do that if I relocated on the same day I'd keep the existing money in there, as the primer money was already the takings. But it feels real dishonest to pay yourself up as a hint that that's what needs to be done. I dislike that. Let them do it if they want. I think I can find one photo example, or maybe that's on screen now. That might be well below average by some other busker's standards. I don't pretend to be widely enjoyed or 
good at this. I would almost entirely avoid repeating a song on any given day, only really making an exception if it was my newest edition, which I might play at the start and the end, or if it's requested, or if like over two hours have passed and I've felt like bringing out one of the most reliable options. Anything to avoid the indignity of some passerby passing by twice and seeing me doing the same content. I've seen buskers with very limited repertoires, sometimes literally on one song repeat mode, and I intend to not be like that. One big class divide in busking is the microphone and amplifier setup, which now looks basically essential to the practice. I was proudly keeping underneath that line. It had taken enough saving to get an electroacoustic guitar. I also couldn't lug that much around. I guess these people drive and park up or have a friend or something. I feel that the amplified setup undermines the spontaneity of the performance. Yeah, it took me a while to watch town and find a spot that wasn't within the blare of tourist trap bagpipers. But the idea of busking was a whim, and I respected that by not building constructs around it. I'm very probably saying this because I let the resources and friends and ability to set up a public mic and stand and amplifier and cables and a generator, I guess. But the overwhelming sound of an amplified performance from someone who has to stand still, someone called Jack. It just feels like a different activity to me. Like something they've practiced and honed specifically for busking, and I like it to be far more impulsive. Not having the tech, I would just broadcast as far as my voice and sound hole would go, and I had more mobility available. Without getting in anyone's way, I would find street furniture to lean on and bust a jump off of. It sounds shit now, but I think it worked. It's more troubadorous without the corporate sponsors. I mean, literally, I've seen buskers who announce their sponsors. And that feels like such a separate world to art to me. Yeah, finding a spot was the first challenge, and that was often walking whilst carrying a massive guitar case often having to swap hands every few hundred meters. I like to set up in front of an abandoned shop because, well, that's totally my vibe. And it makes a kind of stage, maybe even a ledge to sit or stand in, with area that belongs to me as far as the sound projects, and it's not getting in anyone's way. But you gotta be out with the earshot of other buskers. Bagpipers set up on corners and blast that same horrible tune 20 times an hour, and tourists love it because, well, that's the only reason they do it. Many times I'd spend like 10 minutes or so finding the one good spot left in town. Then just as I've set up, the blast of Scotland the Brave means I've got to go find somewhere else, if there's anywhere at all. There would be days I'd give up without performing anything at all, and there's just no way of knowing unless all of a city's buskers set up a discard or something. Actually, there's enough discard from the bagpipes. It's not just other buskers who are the obstacles. There are people who beg on the streets, sometimes with a performance, but often without. To be upstaging their monetary footfall for my bourgeois pastime is just gross. Literally. I had a bit of a habit of giving my busking takings to homeless people, but then that made me wonder why I was taking the takings in the first place. It felt condescending. The real scum of the streets are people who want you to subscribe to something, like a charity or a religion. Shop owners have occasionally taken umbrage, asked me to relocate, and yet yeah, if I'm really annoying someone in their day job, my bad. It's very easy to freeze up when you're meant to pick a song. I call it karaoke paralysis. You just forget everything you know about songs when it becomes imperative to think of one. It's from the overwhelming choice of thousands. You might have encountered similar when asked like your favorite band by someone who thinks that individual, infallible, and thought-out favorites are an important thing for all of us to have. 
for that reason I learned to write a list of the reliable busking songs in an Excel file real small on two sides of A4. Always expanding and occasionally shrinking with little highlighter colors for what's top tier, what I probably overplay and what to play when I kind of need a break. Probably Perfect Day or something is low vocals and medium paced strumming. With how unnecessarily barbarous I am as a performer, uh, I mean punk, with how punk I am as a performer, strings will break and I got pretty good at getting to the end of a song with just the five strings and then rapidly replacing. I've not kept any footage of me busking because that's not how that works. I didn't have the means or the staff to record it. There will be like an hour or so set list recorded digitally across a few dozen Taurus compact flash cards over somewhere in China if you want to dig that out. The one footage I found is my friend Obi recording me. Do you want a wall? No. <laughs> That's not Wonder Wall. <laughs> it's not Wonder Wall, but I like it. But the sound really didn't carry, huh? I would take a day trip to Glasgow or something and try and at least make my train fare back by busking. Which arguably makes the whole thing redundant, but all of life is redundant. I maybe regret this audacity now, but I had a habit of joining in with other buskers. When walking back to Glasgow station, I found another busker who had the contextual advantage of being a skinny young woman who can play guitar doing some gaga or other. And I greeted and joined in and she welcomed me, but I soon realized I was scaring off her audience. Women are treated horribly by society, but women with talent, after the disbelief and the objectification, get celebrated more than I could ever ask access without hormone replacement therapy. And then they get objectified and disbelieved a bit more. There's talent and then there's how you're perceived and I'm an acquired taste to perceptors. Acquirable, but it takes a bit of a double take. I've been perceived as having a rubbish voice and maybe they were right in the particular context that they perceived. I think it's good in the context I intend. You could catch just a glimpse of like Tom Waits and easily think he's rubbish. Even a mid-warble Mariah Carey doesn't sound right until you've established the key, the context. I made like business cards with my band camp on for if someone likes me and wants to hear more, but I don't think I really gained any audience from busking. Encountering a busker is a forgettable moment in the liminal experience of walking through town. One guilt with this stuff is copyright infringement. I don't really care for copyright, but the act of busking covers is specifically using someone else's intellectual property for profit. Unless intellectual property is intellectual theft. I mean, I've definitely bust a few Long Pigs singles, and the guy from Long Pigs is really into intellectual property. I think some establishments require busking licenses that might cover something to do with this. Might stipend the multinational conglomerates who own music as a concept. It'd be cool to figure out a way to do it without the bureaucrats. I never registered for a busking license. Again, because it undermines the concept for me. And the license's legal status in the UK is vague and probably just not necessary. I think it's different in different council jurisdictions and it's changed in the last decade or so and it's very rarely prosecuted. I always figured if I were busted for not having a license after doing a busted jump, I'd say I'm doing the whole thing for charity and they can watch me take all of my takings to a charity shop. Because I do that some days anyway, when I had more faith in charity. Edinburgh had some nasty regulations, especially during the fringe. Specifications about when and where you can't busk. I didn't pay it much attention. I don't really like the new town, the posh high street. 
but I'd even tried Prince's Street a few times when the road was out of order for tramway construction because it was pedestrianised and quiet enough for me to claim some noise space. Because for most of this time I've had a separate job and just undertook performance as a hobby. As a more practical and more public version of my hobby of playing music loads. I'm privileged enough to not really be interested in money. Note I say this just before the UK cost of living crisis really unfolds. And anything the public can spare ought to go to a good cause rather than a bank account. I guess the ability to get paid for it proves myself as a musician, but I'm not fooling myself that it was anything but their spare change unless they gave, like, a pound or more. Remember pounds? Okay, looky here. I made a zine about the kinds of people who donate to buskers, and it's got a pretty twee vibe I was trying for that really hasn't aged great. But if we cringe enough in advance, then it won't feel like a full cringe when it happens. Let's go. I am a busker. Yay for generalizing. I'm writing to you about passerby archetypes. I am a busker. I stand somewhere in Edinburgh haphazardly groping an electroacoustic guitar and yelling songs I stole from David Bowie or Brett Henderson or someone else or no one at all. I guess I named Brett because he was solo at the time. I can't specifically remember doing a Brett solo song, but I've probably done one or two. There's a link to my MySpace and there's an 18 year old me. This isn't about me though. This is about the oddities who benevolently provide my income, the general public. They cringe at my high notes, glower at my every notes, cock eyebrows at I kissed a girl, tell me to do some oasis. Uh, I don't really get which pronunciation I was spelling out there. And occasionally pay me. Sometimes with currency, sometimes it's British. Yeah, I would get a lot of foreign coins, but I can't do anything with those. Onward, archetypes ho. The Bopalong Grandma. Female with large age, semi-ironic, wholly patronizing, but well-intended grooving and a dentured beam frequent and generous pay. The elderly are lovely to me, considering I wear fingerless gloves and hoodies sometimes. I had to put Bob along Grandma first. She's just so nice. I can be singing about overdosing on gay suicide, and often am, and she'll still shake her fake hip like it's 1929 and pay warmly. This one time she took my hand and thanked me profusely for real music after I will follow you into the dark. Then the creepy drunk, usually male, of indeterminate age between like 15 and 70. And this kind of dude would just come and stare at me real close. He'd occasionally pay me and stud too close. He's only trying to be nice and have some fun with an entertainer. Awkward questions in thick scotch between or during songs. He thinks I'm good though. One thought I was the guy from Deer Hunter. Sometimes he'll request something a bit vintage, but that's been Bowie and Springsteen before now, so I sated him and he yelled along every other line. This is the kind of guy who might ask to try my guitar and that never goes well. Oh, a female instance of this guy took my guitar and sang, can't do the voice. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Old MacDonald had a farm. Then there's the fascinated child with parents in tow. Enchanted and it's easy income if the parents step any closer. There's some dated posers speak and they stare and point and gape until daddy gives them a 50p to toss into my case. The parents are kind of embarrassed about it and I found that people's embarrassment is the best way for me to make money from my content. Oh yeah, a kid with her head between her legs. That's something to not make eye contact with. It's definitely dated when there's a scene girl. I guess I was doing bits of Paramore at the time. I have a history of being found attractive by teenagers. I think and hope that I'm aging out of it now, but at the time I wrote this, I was a teenager and thereby got some anorexic girl's attention. I didn't do anything with it. Oh yeah, awesome shoes. 
I got a fiver from complimenting someone's shoes, so I spent it on shoes. It's a very occasional cameo for me that someone will slip a note in, and I'm like, are you sure you meant to do this? I do thank for every donation. I've got a pretty good grasp of switching from my singing voice to saying thank you. And now me complaining about mainstream people. Me saying this over a decade later, and now I realize how posh people think I am. This just comes across as classist. I was less aware of how I'm interpreted as posh at the time. But it is part of the experience. Hostility from the kind of people whose preferred noise in public is just blasting out dubstep on their phone speakers. I don't remember this, but I seem to be writing that one of them slapped me. They would kind of try and nab some money and try to, like, mock me as a performer. I tended to just carry on as I am, because I'm kind of comfortable with myself in that regard. I've called them stinkards. Maybe in another twelve and a half years they'll be equally embarrassed of how I speak now. I don't expect to be alive. So yeah, that's just some examples of the kind of people archetypes. I could do one of those for the types of buskers, couldn't I? So there's Jack with his dull accessibility and finger picking and entry level niceness. There's the soloist musician with an easy listening backing track doing most of the work. There's the microphone only one who's really testing the definition of busking. The one from a past era who has little dancing puppets and is known by everyone in the town. The ones in Birmingham who want to recruit people to their stupid religion. One who actually deserves your money. And the runt who thinks he's better than everyone because he's worse than them. If you're a busker and you're not in those categories, congrats on bringing something new. You don't see one-man bands around so much anymore. Maybe they fell out with each other. Busking is exhausting, but life is exhausting too. I used to commit to it for a daytime because I'm really bad at daytime, so it gave a kind of constant distraction and yet got me outside out of bed got me income, and was what I specifically liked to do. It'd wear me out physically, and I'd probably carry on until my voice gave way. Maybe two hours set list on average could be much less if it's just not feeling right. Maybe one relocation per day. Part of the consideration is, what right do I have to be making a noise in public and just aping someone else's creativity? I never quite reached an answer on that, but when you see the Jacks playing Oasis, it gets easier. Oasis is just a massive thing in UK busking culture, even in Edinburgh. I'd like to say I've never done any Oasis, but I have some memory of someone being polite enough and requesting live forever, so I figured out how that goes for a verse and a chorus. Can't do the falsetto part. You kind of don't need to learn Oasis songs, they're just there. I would consciously avoid the cliches of busking and of beginner guitar play. Obviously my music tastes tend to dwell in the alternative, not for the sake of being alternative. I find it very accessible. I'll tune into the mainstream moments that I can stand. I had a habit of seeing people in Nirvana shirts, so transitioning into some Nirvana or like Pokemon shirts in the Pokemon theme song. I don't exactly chase the people up, but you take inspiration when it's there. One time I tried working with a singer friend. Oh, and one other time my flatmate passed by, so we did the song about a girl. He had a good voice. But yeah, Becky, I learned some songs on her request, and we harmonized, and that went well enough. We got paid. I'm not sure I'll undertake much more of busking. Maybe just very occasional whims, like annual or less. I got priced and prized out of Edinburgh. And though I've tried busking a couple dozen times in this null little town, I think the hobby is over. And I kind of no longer use coins, so I can't exactly expand the public to. And I've not learned any new chart songs since Taylor Swift's 1989. Unless Kate Bush counts. And I'm not into guitar as much anymore. Firstly, because I swear I just don't sound as good at it these days. And secondly, from a disability standpoint, it fries my carpals. 
If I had the tech to carry a piano to town, I'd obviously do that. And maybe I'm recognizing that the only legit way forward is with an amplified setup, and I don't want to make that leap. I generally prefer performing to the theoretically infinite public of the archived internet, compared to the incidental passerby public who will hear about 20 seconds max with a slight Doppler effect. I think street performing is a human right, and it's under threat from legislation, gentrification, the death of the town centre, the collapse of disposable income, chuggers, bad street performers, and the TikTokification of content. But me, I've kind of had enough of the street now. Smell you later, stinkheads. Reach for the sun Climb every mountain higher Reach for the stars Follow your heart's desire